practical habits that will make you a millionaire. Warren Buffett once said, the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they are too heavy to be broken. Habits tend to sneak up on us before we know it. And that's why it is important to build positive and healthy habits consciously. And in today's video, I'll share with you five practical habits that will aid you on your journey towards financial success. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Manif Ali. I'm a self-made multimillionaire with multiple brick and mortar businesses that have closed billions of dollars in sales. I'm not selling you anything here. The purpose of this channel is to teach you what it takes to become successful through real life experiences that I've had. So if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button now. Habit number one, fully committing yourself. The first step for you becoming successful is for you to fully commit to yourself. Fully committing to yourself means holding yourself accountable for what you want in life. That means your decisions and your actions in order to achieve the things that you want. To do this, you need to have a long-term vision. Where do you want to go with your financial journey? It could be to have a million dollars in net worth, or it could just be to have enough money without working too much. Think about what is yours and make it clear as possible. And when you already have established your long-term vision, stick to it by practicing practicing self-discipline. If you're still in your early 20s, it could be good to have optimism and a great appetite for risk. It will be a valuable asset when you are still starting to build your wealth from scratch. And when you start young and engage in risky business ventures like businesses and investing in high-risk portfolio, and even if you fail those, you still have time to recover and apply what you've learned to the next venture. I know I talked about optimism, and here I am talking about failure, but this is just me talking realistically. Those ventures that are called risky for a reason, they have the potential for failure failure. And even if I say to practice rational optimism, that doesn't mean that you just dive into business and invest blindly. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's better for you to build a strong foundation early on. Your journey through optimism to have a big appetite for risk because that is how you will learn. Another way to fully commit yourself is by establishing good habits like eating healthy foods, learning about emotional control, and cultivating a never-ending hunger for knowledge. There are a lot of successful people who keep on emphasizing the importance of a growth mindset and being a lifetime learner in reading books. One of the most famous ones is Warren Buffett's habit of reading, which he spends 80% of his day on. According to him, during the early days of his career, he read about 600 to 1,000 pages a day. And if you can nurture this hunger early on and apply what you have learned in your life, then you will be one step closer to your goal. Habit number two is enhancing your marketability. What does it mean to increase your marketability? Well, it is when you upskill or reskill meaning that you try to improve something you already have an existing skill, for example, and or learn new ones. Whether you like it or not, we live in a world that's dynamic, where our salary really depends on the value we bring to a company. The higher the value, the more we add, the better the compensation we get. And we can only add more value if we are equipped with the necessary skills that are needed. So what does being highly marketable have to do with achieving financial success? Well, when you talk about personal finance, there's a long standing debate about what is better, increasing your income or saving more. While it would be great if you could do both, personally, I think it is better to increase your income stream. This is because the things that you can do by cutting your expenses is very limited when you only have limited earnings. And this is where your marketability comes in. When you are highly skilled, your chances for promotion and higher earnings is going to increase. For instance, let's look at your marketability based on your educational level. According to a 2017 BLS survey, the higher your education, the higher your wage and the chances of getting higher employment. As you can see from this chart, if you have completed a doctoral or professional degree, your average salary is about $103,820 compared to not having any formal education or credentials with an average salary of $23,480. Of course, there are other ways to increase your marketability besides attaining higher education, like virtual training or boot camps. I'm just showing this chart to you so that you can have a better picture of the importance of being highly marketable through higher education or upskilling. Habit number three, start building your cash flow. Now that that you've established your long-term vision and practiced accountability and self-discipline in your finances and even increased your marketability, it is time to start building your empire through cash flow. So to do this, you can try to invest in income generating assets such as real estate, the number one thing I love, and dividend stocks. You can also utilize your skills to have side hustles or side businesses or take on contractual or project-based jobs. Or if you're great in front of the camera and have talents for content creation, you should also try doing valuable YouTube videos such as this. The goal here is to have a consistent cash flow in your pocket. And remember what I said earlier about establishing habit number two, increasing your income streams. 
Well, this is where you use those skills and experiences that you have in habit number two. For instance, being a YouTuber may be considered passive income because you have great content and you can continue earning from those videos that you made five years ago. But to produce a video that will continue to earn for many years, you need to put a lot into the research, the writing, the graphics, the editing. Those things can't be done in one day or two. So to earn passive income in the future, you have to start today and do the necessary work. For example, buying some real estate could be passive in the future, but first you gotta earn enough to buy the building rent them out and do all the work required and it's never going to be 100 passive habit number four create a solid investment portfolio so now that you have been consistent with your cash flow it is time to create an investment portfolio building a solid investment portfolio will depend on many factors such as your risk tolerance age financial goals how active you want to be and how involved you want to be and also your financial capacity but regardless of the differences in these factors everyone can benefit from one rule of thumb having a diversified long-term investment goal so have a balanced portfolio that consists of not just stocks, bonds, real estate, precious metals like gold, appreciating assets like land, and some cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, mutual funds. So the goal here is to align your portfolio with your needs, goals, and capacity. And for instance, if you're young and a bit of a risk taker, you can try and invest in individual stocks or even cryptocurrency. They have higher returns but are a lot riskier. However, if you want to play it safe and prefer not to manage your investments actively, you can also invest in index funds like the S&P 500. But the most important point is invest consistently over time so that your assets can start to work for you rather than you working for your assets. Habit number five is stop comparing yourself with others. Did you know that comparing yourself is the quickest way to kill your confidence? The number one culprit of this is the widespread social media that we are seeing. As everyone is posting the highlight reel of their life and often lying or fabricating about it, most people can't help but compare their lives to others. So I can't blame you. After all, human brains are designed to notice differences. Consistent in nurturing your habits all the way from one to number four, you will be able to see the success and improvement, not just in your finances, but in your life overall. When that happens, comparing yourself with others will naturally become a useless endeavor. So instead of doing so, put all your energy and effort towards nurturing those healthy habits. The five habits that I have mentioned, committing yourself, enhancing your marketability, building your cash flow, creating a solid and diversified investment folio, and not comparing yourself to others. When you put these side by side like this, they seem pretty simple and easy to apply. However, the biggest challenge is to consistently do them over the next decade or two. You will be exposed to different scenarios where your willpower will be tested, or you may be tempted to lifestyle inflation because you tasted a bit of success or now you're earning more because you were promoted. This is where you need to go back to the number one habit and remember your long-term vision and remember why you started this journey in the first place. You need to remember your plans and where you want your money to go. So stick to your plans and remind yourself that you are not doing this for instant gratification, but you are building your empire of wealth and it will take a bit. That's all for today's video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you still want to learn more financial tips, you can check out this video, Ways to Reach Your Retirement Goals During Your 30s.